Hello, 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 it's Tawana Carter, your current and anxiety coach. And yes, I'm on a little bit late for some people. If you're out on the East Coast, where, I mean on the West Coast, it's just 52 p.m. If you're on the East Coast where I am, it is 9.52 p.m. But I try to do them, I do my lives at different times because I know I have a lot of people in the UK and in India and New Zealand australia over in new york so i do them at different times to catch people right so tonight i am on talking about how do you handle being an introvert who's living with anxiety and this one is near and dear to my heart because well that's what i did for quite a number of years of course i was almost 40 before i realized i had social anxiety and it was about that time that I realized I was an introvert too, maybe a little bit later after that. So it's been interesting. So I just give me a moment. I do want to share this with my risers in Rising Above Anxiety. I have a free Facebook for professional women. It's called Rising Above Anxiety. And you can go, uh, look that up on Facebook and go ahead and join us, right? So I just need to find the live feed here. I actually got my laptop and my lap. And I'm doing the uh, live from my smartphone. So trying to multitask here. And there it is. My internet is really slow. I probably should have popped over to my hotspot because I know my hotspot is always doing well. But we'll see. If I look all funny on the um, computer thing here, I'll go ahead and end the, end the live and I'll start all over again. I've had to do that before because... Yeah, my internet, I don't know, I'm right next door to my um, my modem, but eh, it doesn't always work the way I want it to work. We'll see, right? And so again, tonight I'm going to talk about, you know, how do you handle being an introvert who is living with anxiety? And it is something that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I didn't really know how to handle it until much 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 later on um because i didn't know i had it. like i said i didn't know i had anxiety so i didn't know how to deal with so so i'm going to start off by telling you what not to do because before i figured out i had anxiety i did all the things that i probably shouldn't have done right just just put it out there okay so what i did was I try to make people like me because in some of you out there that are introverts, you may have had this experience. You know, I love to live in my headspace. I love to think things out. I take a lot of time. I'm thoughtful. I'm pretty decisive. I'm fairly decisive, but I'm going to think things out, weigh all the consequences. I want to do my research and then I want to make a decision, right? By the time that you do all of this and you're in the workplace, people look at you as being quiet and you're thoughtful and they say you're stuck up okay other people say well she just thinks she's better than anybody else she thinks she's smarter than anybody else and and being better than anyone else has nothing to do with it you don't necessarily think you're smarter you're just decisive you're thoughtful you like to weigh out everything before you make a decision so what I tried to do is I tried to make people like me. I tried to, you know, please people and make them happy and try to make myself useful to people, doing things for people, trying to figure out what people need and help them out. And then it was like, see, she's trying to help us out because she thinks we're dumb. We don't know how to do stuff. And so it was like, well, hold up. That wasn't why I was doing it. Now she's got to explain to us because she's so much smarter and we're dumb. We can't understand what she's saying. And so oftentimes I would dig myself a hole. And I have a type of anxiety called social anxiety. So the fact that people were saying what I felt were mean things about me or misunderstanding the motives of why I was doing what I was doing, it would just kick my social anxiety up. And then it would make things worse. And I would go home at nighttime and just feel bad. I would cry. Um, I would just feel horrible. You know, people would judge me. And I was like, but I don't think I'm smart than anybody else. In fact, I haven't, you know, at the time I didn't realize it. But I had imposter syndrome. So I would walk into a place and think everybody was smarter than me. I would think everybody was better than me. Everybody was prettier than me. Everybody had a better shape. They had... It was whatever it was. Everybody was always better than me. 
So it was ironic <laughs> that people thought that I thought I was better than somebody. I was like, yeah, that doesn't happen. And so again, with the social anxiety, I always worried about people judging me. So I would go overboard again to try to make people like me. And then I try to do things for people and basically be a, you know, ha be a, a doormat and let people walk over me. Because I figured maybe if I just help people, they will like me. They won't judge me. And then they won't think this about me. So anyway, all of that was absolutely wrong stuff to do. I I'll just say that it was the wrong stuff to do because people didn't like me anymore. They suspected my motives. Um, the other thing was because I was an introvert. I was not comfortable sharing my true inner thoughts with people because I'm an introvert. I don't like to do that. And so, you know, that kind of came off as being inauthentic to people. If you don't share things about you, you know, it just feels inauthentic to people because they'll, you know, you'll be at work and they're sharing things and you're just kind of like in the, in the kind of in the bag, the wallflower. I'll just listen to everybody, what everybody's saying. I listen to the conversations, but you don't have to include me. I'll just stay right here and I'll be quiet and I'll be happy. And so people kind of felt strange about that. Like I was the one judging them. So it just did not turn out well. And so, um, some of the things that I did you know a little later on um i tried to like smile and, and and i learned to pick up humor was one of the things i learned to do and i learned to laugh at myself so that when people made rude comments or they made snide comments i learned to take those comments and make them humorous and kind of laugh at myself and laugh it off and so i found that in some certain respects that was helpful to be humorous because typically humorous people kind of have a personality right you know air quotes their personality and people kind of relate to you better if you have humor mm. and so that was one of the things that i had to learn early on especially when i was a second lieutenant in the army i found that after my first duty station i had to learn to adopt humor because people you know they felt i was unapproachable in fact some people still feel that way about me that i'm unapproachable and you know people mm. make those snap judgments because oftentimes they don't take time to get you know, to know an introvert. And I'm one of those people that people often say, you know, before I got to know you, you were completely different than who I know you to be. And that's because they actually took time to get to know me. And when you do take that time, I do open up and I do share things. Um, but, and that's now, not before, you know, I, I didn't know that. To, to do that then so but those are some of the things that I did wrong I tried to make people like me I was a people pleaser um I was non-confrontational so if people hurt my feelings I did not say that's very hurtful I'm not judgmental I'm not this I would just take stuff I would go home and cry about it um I would go home and be mad about it by myself but I was one of those people who felt that anger was wrong. And so I must be something I'm doing wrong. And I never really addressed the issue. It wasn't until later on that number one, I learned to take humor and use it. But you have to be careful with humor. Um, because being self um, you know, self-deprecating, always going after your own self, laughing at yourself. You can take that too far as well. So it's a, a little bit if humor is good especially if people are saying rude things about you and if you learn to not let that bother you but take it take it and flip it and make it humorous people will realize that either they are hurting your feelings or they realize they can't hurt your feelings and they let it go most of the time people realize that the mean things they were saying when i turned it around it wasn't getting to me like they thought it was and they just stopped of course you know, I have social anxiety. So they actually got to me, but I just pretended like they did not. And I went home and I cried or I went home and I destroyed my apartment because I was angry and I threw stuff. See, a lot of people don't know that about me. I did have an anger problem, but it was all internal. And I pretty much almost let, never let people see when I would get angry. I would wait till I get home and I would be furious. And, you know, there are some times that once I got done throwing my anger fit, I would look around and my apartment would just be a hot mess. I would just have torn it to shreds, throwing things, breaking things. But again, people 
did not know that about me because when they saw me out in public, I was always a nice person and a quiet person. And you would give her anything. She would do it. She's dependable. She's responsible. And I would get angry, but I didn't know how to express the anger. And so I will say all of the, and you know, I started off telling you the things don't do, don't hold your anger in. Um, and of course, I guess I was kind of letting it out at home and that I tore up my stuff, but I was tearing up my stuff, so that probably wasn't a good thing either. Um, so when I started to use humor a little bit, that started to help a lot. And, and when I finally pinpointed that I had social anxiety, that's when I jumped in and I just started doing all this research and reading and reading and figure out how do I get around this. And at that point, I had gained some maturity and I learned to take those baby steps when people said things that I didn't like. I would take the little baby steps and say something. And it's not to say that when I did say something, I would feel so guilty and I would go through all the self recriminations and maybe I shouldn't have said that. And I would just be sick and I would go home, especially if it happened on a Thursday or Friday and I would see people to Monday. I would be sick all weekend long, worried about what people are going to say, how they're going to say it, because are they mad at me? And surprisingly, I would always be surprised that I would go back to work and people didn't even care. They didn't, you know, I would have spent the whole weekend agonizing over maybe I shouldn't have said that and maybe I shouldn't have said anything that wasn't the right thing to do and I go back the next day I go back to work on Monday people didn't even care the moment for them would have passed over it was just me who was stuck in a self-recrimination so after learning to do that a bit I finally adopted the motto you know what if both of us got to go away angry why does it always have to be me and that is something that I do stick by and I actually say that to people now you may not like what I have to say. We might have to go away angry, but it's not always going to be me going away angry. And it took a lot for me to get to that point. But again, I used humor first. Then I took a deep breath and, you know, I would practice at home. I would write out what I was going to say, what I was angry about, how I felt when the person said whatever they said or whatever they did to me. And I had to learn to speak up because I would get stuck with all the stuff nobody else at work wanted to do. And that would just make me furious because it's like, this isn't fair. This is not fair. And, you know, you do have to learn which battles to pick because you can't fight every battle. I mean, you really can't fight every battle, but you will lose the war if you fight every battle. And so it's not that I spoke up about everything, but the things that really ticked me off the worst or if someone became disrespectful or started to use me, that was like my trigger when people started to use me. Then I had to speak up and I learned to do that. And so it was it was a test of the trial. It was a long period to get there. But again, when you're an introvert, hey, Sonia, how are you? When you're an introvert living with anxiety, the, you get that war in between you. You know, I know for me as an introvert, again, I like to live in my head. And I like to have these conversations with myself. And I'm cool with being in the back, not being the center of attention. But what I found out that really made me angry was when people started to use that and they would consistently give me more stuff to do, more um, responsibilities. And it's been like that through my childhood, through adult. And those kind of things would make me angry. But what I found out was I got tired of living with that anger and I got tired of being unhappy and feeling like I wasn't respected I felt like I wasn't valued for the work that I did. It just became, well, if you don't want to do something, just give it to her. She'll do it. She's not going to say anything. She's not going to speak up. That started to bother me. And I found out that when I had social anxiety, when I dealt with the issues that caused social anxiety, then I was able to better deal with the issue that came with being an introvert so that I learned to maneuver both. But it, it can it can be a headache sometimes. I'll be honest with you. And there's still some times that I'll just take a big old deep breath. I don't want to speak up and I don't want to draw attention. But um, I found it helpful. Um, I learned after my tour in the military that sometimes it's better. And I tell people just put everything on the plate. I remember being in a work environment and somebody came in and said something about where I was sitting at and some people were sitting at the table with me. It's like, you guys ought to come over and sit with us because, and whatever the reasons they gave. And so I, again, I had learned a little bit at that point 
I was like, you know what? No, I'm not doing that. If you ever come in this lounge and figure and see me sitting at the table, you're more than welcome to sit here. But what I'm not going to do is gauge how much time I sit at the table with you and how much I don't because I don't have time for it. Now, I said that because I knew I wanted to put my cards on the table. But whoo, some people are upset with me. And I did that self-recrimination thing. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I said that. Oh, I can't believe I said it. But people understood not to come at me that particular way anymore. Now, I still get accused of being, you know, untactful, being tactless. Um, and that is just something I realized that probably was going to follow me to the grave. Um, you know, because I'm an introvert and, you know, people tell, you know, I'm fairly intelligent. And the two together kind of make you come off that way. And so... I used to really spend a lot of amount of energy trying to fix that. And what I found that is some people, I'm never going to fix it. It's, I'm just never going to fix that. So I could choose to waste a lot of energy trying to fix it and make other people feel better. Or I can choose to say that, you know, I have some character flaws and I'm not perfect. Hey, it's what it is. Um, and again, once people get to know me, they do figure out that, nah, she's not as tactless. Now I do feel things deeply. Um, some people say it's because I'm an Aquarius and, you know, I know a lot of other Aquariuses that are the same. So whether or not you believe in astronomy or not, I, I do feel deeply. Um, and I'm not as much as an empath, at least I don't think I am, that I used to be. Um, I do still feel when people are in pain. But it's not as deeply and it doesn't make me cry like it used to. So I used to be an empath, be an introvert, and have social anxiety. If you can imagine trying to deal with all of that growing up and traversing through life, trying to figure that out. Yeah, that, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm a superstar when it comes to things, right? So, but it, there is a way to figure out how to handle it. It, it really is. And I will say this, that I didn't handle it on my own. I got help. I had a counselor. Um, I had some mentors. I had some people that coached me and some people that helped me out. Um, because I there's just sometimes I'm a little bit clueless and I miss things. I, I live in my head space and I know that. And I will often tell people I live in my head space. So if you think I, you know, don't assume I do know something, I probably should. But don't assume I knew it. Don't assume that I know and speak to me and tell me. And that's just... It's just trying to be authentic and I do work on trying to be authentic because as an introvert, I don't like necessarily sharing my thoughts, but you, you know, I found out with people to, 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 for people to be thoughtful towards you and to feel that you're okay. I did have to learn to share some things in my life. And so that I'm always a work in progress. And so I'm not perfect by any means, but I am a work in progress. So you can you know, you can maneuver between being an introvert and who lives with anxiety and as well as being an empath for those of you that are empaths. It's a, it's, it's tough, but it is doable. And I know for me, like I said, humor was a big piece of that. And then learning how to manage my social anxiety because people look at me and they go, well, you do Facebook lives. It, I still go through my little stuff that I go through before I come on live. And I've really done enough now that if I make a mistake, I just make a mistake. Um, there are very few Facebook lives out of E-Race. You know. um, now, if something's messed up and I'm just starting off, I might stop it and start over. But I don't I don't erase them anymore. I, I just, if I make a mistake, I make a mistake. I'm human and I have to be okay with me being, you know, being human. And I have to be okay with other people seeing my mistakes and realizing that I'm human because I'm not perfect. And that was a thought process, the mindset shift for me that helped me really deal with being an introvert and being someone who lives with anxiety is understanding I am not perfect and I'm never going to be perfect. I'm never going to get it perfectly right every time. And I have to learn to live with that and, and understand that if people see me less than for making a mistake, that is their mind. Their mind tells them what to do and how to think. And I got to live with that. My mind tells me what to do and how to think and how to be. And I have to, to do that to be happy. So I don't spend as much time anymore in the self-recriminations and the self-doubt like I used to. And that was a process, like I said, that I went through. So for those of you out there who are still finding it difficult to live with um hey angel how are you um talking about how um to to traverse or maneuver living being an introvert and someone who lives with anxiety and in my case i'm an empath too 
And so um, if you find that you're still having difficulties maneuvering between introvert and living with anxiety, you know, drop me, just send me a message. Send me a message and we can hop on the phone and talk about it. Um, it is doable. It does take time and it does take a huge mindset shift and you do have to leave perfectionism behind. That was the hardest thing to do for me. Uh, what really helped me deal with the perfectionism was realized now was driving people in, around me crazy. I was driving my kids crazy. It was doing more detriment to them in my relationship with them and with people. And so I'm always one who cares about what people think. And so understanding that my perfectionism was causing them heartaches because you know, I was consistently putting pressure on do it over, do it over, do it over and never, you know, like quite finishing a project because there was always something to do to perfect. Uh, there's that mess up again to perfect it, that that drive pe drives people crazy. So Angel says, I'm doing good, sis. You're such a light and a blessing. Thank you, Angel. I appreciate that. Um, This has truly been a journey for me. Um, like I said, I was almost 40 before I realized I had anxiety. I, I just thought that there was something wrong with me. I can remember being a teenager laughing about it now. You know, I'll look at my parents and I, again, I didn't share a lot of thoughts with my parents either because I'm an introvert. I will look at them and just get upset because I'll be like, you guys know there's something wrong with me. You got to see you're my parents. You got to see there's something wrong with me. Get me help. And I never told them that, but I just felt, well, they're my parents. They should know. And I did. I used to get angry with them. I was like, there's something wrong with me. Surely as my parents, you know, you got three normal kids and then you have me. How could you not know there's something wrong with me? Um, and I lived that way for a long time. It was just this little secret that I stayed with that there's something wrong with me. And um, they should know that my parents should know. And I carried that secret with me for darn near 40 years before realizing it was social anxiety. Um, and so so that's why I'm in this space today. So that for those of you out there who are introverts, living with anxiety, and you're still, you know, having some difficulty maneuvering that, send me a direct message. I offer free strategy calls. We hop on the line for about 45 minutes or so, and we just come up with a plan, a workable plan that's workable specifically for you. And so that that is my truth today. I appreciate you, appreciate you guys for, for tuning in and tuning in and there's one of those mistakes again right um for tuning in and listening and and i appreciate the comments too and i'm always appreciative of you joining live and for those of you who always catch me on the replay thank you so much for catching me on the replay those are my motivational nuggets for you this evening have a great night bye-bye